Aloha Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe and I'm your new friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you today live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Today our topic of discussion will be on community resilience. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that resilience is in the face of disaster. Oh, the resilience in the face of disaster is not a question of what is government going to do to help. The resolve and resilience is how do we engage the whole community to build collaboratively. Today, we are very honored to welcome a young gentleman of the West Coast. His name is Pono Higa. He is the coordinator for Waianae Coast Disaster Readiness Team, the acronym WCDRT, a collaborative of West or Leeward Oahu stakeholders preparing and organizing their community to be resilient when faced with disasters whatever the disaster may be. And today, we're gonna to be talking about the different disasters, what we need to do in preparation of the disaster. And um, we're so blessed that we have Pono Higa here from the west coast of Wainai, Maili, Makaha, my hometown, all right? So that's why I'm so excited and I'm so happy, Pono, to welcome you to the show because you're a wealth of knowledge. And um, I just want you to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you go to school and tell us about yourself? Well, thank you, Wendy, for having me. Uh, yeah, I was uh, actually born on Kauai, but I, I lived on the Waianae Coast my entire life. Uh, got my education off the coast, uh, various schools in town. Uh, but I think I'll always call uh, the Waianae Coast my home. Hallelujah, just like me. You know, I'm so blessed that I keep, I'm so proud to be from Miley Elementary. And my claim to fame is that I am the first class the first kindergarten class of Miley Elementary, and uh, very proud of it. And the neat part about it is, sometimes I can turn it on, and sometimes I can turn it off, and sometimes <laughs> I can't. But I survive, right? And so when I met Pono, um, I was very actively uh, working with WAMCAT, which is uh, run by Lieutenant Colonel um, um, Rock. Rock Arakaki. You know, I call him Don Rock Arakaki, and he is this. This, I want to call him a young man too, but he's so full of energy that he just loves the West Coast and he loves just engaging the community in everything he does just so that everybody works harmoniously together. And so I've been very privileged to be invited to his meetings and just seeing all the great activities that are being done and conducted on the West Side. And um, there's a lot going on. Although it seems like they're just living life, enjoying the beaches and the aina, they're doing a lot behind the scenes. And people like Pono is exactly um, what I want to share with all of you. He's like the best kept secret, the treasure of the <laughs> Wainai Coast. So recent events, Pono, have shown us just how vulnerable our Hawaiian state, our island state is. But we truly felt the full impacts of those disasters when we get, we get them on the news, we start preparing, and we get blessed. Keoku is guiding and watching our, over our islands, and we're really blessed. But you know what? One day something may happen, like we have experienced before. So can you tell us a little bit more about the different disasters, the different sorts of disasters? Because we just think hurricane, tsunami, hideaway, but there are a lot of different labels or kinds of disasters. So go right into that and explain to us. Well, uh, what we do is, uh, I guess, train and organize folks in the community. Just you know, the difference between emergencies and disasters. Emergencies can happen on a day-to-day -day basis, a traffic collision, a, a child at a playground, but disasters are things that uh, will more so impact the, the broader community. Uh, as the uh, picture shows, you know, we, we're susceptible to earthquake, uh, volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, uh, and there are actually six uh, attributes to hurricanes that uh, three of them we talk about all the time, storm surge, heavy rain, and heavy wind, uh, but we don't talk about the possibility of water spouts or tornadoes or hail. Uh, and uh, in fact, the most frequent disaster that we see on a year, yearly basis is actually flooding. And it doesn't take a hurricane or a tsunami to, for us to get some heavy rain. Right. And, you know, lots of times it may be sunny on one side, and then we see on our screens flash flood warnings are in effect. And people are thinking, what? It's sunny. What's going on? So how do we, people respond to that when they see it on their phones and it's flashing, you know, right there? Be aware, flash flood warnings are up. So what do you tell people about that, just to see that warning on their phone? Well, I think, you know, a year ago, two years ago, people were kind of complacent. We didn't really have too many frequent events. Uh, after last year, 2018, uh, quite a few things happening. 
you know, we're lucky with Hurricane Lane and Olivia that we kind of uh, missed that one for our island. But uh, I think people are slowly responding and people are, are actually heeding the warnings that are coming out. So I think the understanding in the community is a little bit better than it used to be. So what is um, the government, our government, what are they going to do to help us prepare? And how do we prepare for such disasters, Pono? Well, government does its part. You know, I'm not an agent of the government, but I, I, I trust that they're working on plans. In fact, I've been a, a part of some of these plans. Uh, and, and another, you know, good thing for our organization is they've really taken it to, uh, to, to engage the community. And community is actually where disasters start. So organizations like ours, they reached out, they've assisted us in organizing, uh, and, and we're better because of it. And government will also, uh, you know, send out warnings and public information so that people can effectively respond. So, Pono, you know when you refer to our, our organizations and what you're doing, what is it? What is that that you're speaking to, making reference to your, your group? Well, I guess uh, community resilience as a, co a whole. We actually call ourselves the SISR and the Cross Island Community Resilience Network mm -hmm. and a number of other volunteer organizations. Uh, things that started in the community, they're, 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 they're thriving in the community. Uh, so like the Wainai Coast Disaster Readiness Team, we're an organization of volunteers in our own community that have just said, hey, something's got to be done and we can't depend on others to do it. And we live in our community, the one that's going to be impacted. And, you know, let's, let's get things going. And, you know, Pono, being that you are on that west side, um, a few pointers were brought out to my attention and I was... It really took my heart because one main thing you all know out there in, in the desolate west side, when or if there is a disaster hits the island, you guys are kind of shut off. You're isolated out there. And so the brilliance of what you all are doing is you're forming teams that will take it upon your own selves and not wait for government entities to offer and extend out there because they have to take care of the metropolitan and then it circles out, I believe. And so that really shocked me when I heard that. And I thought, but you all on the West Side are really stepping you know, to the plate by making things happen and not just waiting for government to say, hey, you guys are next. All right. And so I'm so proud of what you all are doing there. So let me just take a scenario. I'm driving around in a part of a disaster. There's a telephone pole that has dropped right in front of me or on the side. And the traffic is backed up and we can't get anywhere. I got a chainsaw in my back, in my trunk. Should I whip out that chainsaw? Should I just cut that pole in half and, and make way for everybody else? Tell us what should we do in a situation like that, what they're seeing on this slide here. Well, the image on the slide is actually uh, Farrington Highway, the primary uh, road through the Waianae Coast. And this is actually a picture from several years ago uh, when we had a number of uh, poles come down in, in, in the highway. Uh, first off, you shouldn't Take out your chainsaw. You should, you should leave it as is. And uh, that's one of those instances where you should let government or the appropriate agency respond. Um, the best thing to do is, you know, alert others that may be around that there's a hazard and, and try, to, try to prevent them from uh, going into harm. Right. And, you know, you brought out a really good point that time when you were discussing the telephone pole. I mean, the, the limited amount of telephone poles that we may have if we cut that pole in half because we think we're doing good. What's, what are we actually doing, Pono? Uh, well, the Hawaiian Electric Company has advised, uh, and a number of agencies, even the government, you know, we're limited on resources here. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as far as our commodities uh, here on island, if a disaster were to cut off, you know, approximately over 90% of our commodities are, are come from other places, they need to be shipped in. If those resources are cut off, we have two to three days uh, supply on island. And same thing goes for the example of the, uh, the poles, telephone mm -hmm. pole. Uh, we have limited resources on the island, and as everyone knows, we're isolated here in the Pacific, and it would take some time to get that resource here. So that's why, you know, we've heard examples of during Hurricane Iniki on Kauai, people would just take their chainsaw and go cut the poles and cut the, cut the wires, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of, we need that to idea. rebuild. Yeah. So you heard that, guys. I mean, I was, again, that's natural response. Take it, move it away, get rid of it, but it can't be replaced. So we best just leave it to the professionals to take care of it, mm -hmm. right? And they'll come along when they do. So our job would just maybe traffic control and just get everybody to just calm down, right? So again, being born and raised on the west side, I'm very familiar with Kahe Power Plant, and I know it as the best spot for fishing. 
and where the water comes in and out, comes in cold, goes out hot, and all the great fish hang out right there. I mean, I spend many days fishing there. But in times of disaster, that power plant becomes a massive disaster for the west side. So can you advise us, if we lived on the west side, what would we do in case of disaster and that thing is affected? Well, it's not just the west side. Uh, it, it's actually all of our utilities, all of our infrastructure. Uh, we find it, it's you know, along the coast. And during tsunami, during hurricane, those are susceptible to, to damage. Uh, so for us on the coast, you know, luckily we have Kahe Power Plant. And for m many that say the Wainai side is going to be the last one to get any assistance, uh, to that I say Kahe is a vital asset uh, on our island. And that's going to be one of the first places that the uh, appropriate agencies are going to want to get up and running again. And luckily that's on the Wainai coast. Wow. So I think roads being cleared, uh, that puts us on, on the priority list. I think so, because we do supply a great amount of the island with power. So you mentioned earlier, we have a disaster. We all know that we should you know, gather food and have at least two weeks worth of food in our preparedness packets, bins, right? So when this disaster comes along, what was again brought to my attention, and that's why being prepared is so amazing because I'm now all the, I'm stunned at all the, the facts and the numbers. And this is another thing I never thought about. So again, see the ships start coming to the island. But then the cranes and all the things that were going to take the food off of the, contain, the containers off of the ships, that's damaged. So what happens in that time when the, the, the Matson shipyard, those cranes go down, but the ships are coming. What, what happens then, Ono? Oh, yeah, again, uh, you know, the balance of our island state is very unique and interesting, even different from Puerto Rico, uh, as we saw during Hurricane Maria. Uh, our infrastructure, our utilities are susceptible to those types of disasters. And the best thing we can ask people to do is prepare themselves and their families. You know, the questions come up, uh, do we have you know, these, were these beautiful warehouses that store all this food and medication and stuff for our island. And unfortunately, we don't have that to uh, sustain the community. But one easy storage place that everyone does have is their own home. You know, if you begin preparing now and, and, and you store uh, some, some things, and like you said, recommended by the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, uh, agency of the state, uh, to prepare for at a minimum 14 days. Right. Yeah, you know, and so, I, I'm not near prepared as you are, mentally, physically, and just uh, stock-wise, but I'm getting there. And the fact that I take some time to want to know more, and I, my job today is to encourage as many as we can and reach out and just massage your hearts and your brains that if you love your family as much as you say you do, you take the time, the weekends or whatever time, research, what do I need to do in case of, okay? And so like for myself, when there is the hurricane, you know, approaches and, you know, you're, you're going to tell us at what point we need to start really stockpiling water and all of that. I personally have water bins that are food safe and that I can store water and I know the procedure to uh, sterilize the water. So whether it's water for shower or hygiene, I can also use it for drink and for cooking. I also have many, many supplies dry goods, I have beans, I have rice noodles, I have rice, I have noodles, I have lots of stuff. Then I have my food growing on my balcony, right? So I'm kind of almost there as far as preparedness goes, as far as the two week supply and then some. And that's the whole goal, guys, is I need you all to think that way, to be in the preparedness mode that it could happen at any time. I just really truly feel that Keoku has blessed us for many, many, many years. And this year, for some reason in my heart, I just want to say every, to everyone, just be prepared. And that's why I was so excited when Pono said, yes, I want to come to your, your talk show today and just make this available so more and more people can see the resources that Pono will share with us when we come right back from our break. So right now, we're going to just take a 60-second break. and We'll be right back. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Winston Welt, host of Out and About. It's a show that we have every other Monday on Think Tech Live here. We explore a variety of topics that are really interesting. We explore organizations, events, and the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. We've got some amazing guests on here, like all the shows at Think Tech. So if you want to catch up on stuff, tune into my show every other Monday and other shows here on Think Tech Live. 
it's a great place to learn about stuff, to be informed. And uh, if you have some ideas, come on my show. Let's talk about it. See you later and aloha. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Walter Kawai. I, uh, I'm your host for our monthly uh, live streaming video uh, entitled Ukulele Songs of Hawaii, where I bring on guests. We enjoy talking story about the music industry here in Hawaii, uh, sometimes going back uh, 50 decades, if possible, and uh, always having some good fun talking with entertainers. We're here located at ThinkTech Hawaii, downtown Honolulu at the Pioneer Plaza building and uh, in their studios. And so join me next month for Ukulele Songs of Hawaii. Aloha. Here we are at Think Tech Studios Hawaii in downtown Honolulu. And our guest today is Pono Higa. Pono comes to us from the west side. And this young man is just gone beyond the call. He invited me to do a preparedness fair uh, on the west side in the Waianae Mall. And when he sent out the email, it was like a, a 60 or a 70 year old guy he sent me all this information because he was so well organized, so well seasoned. I couldn't believe this young man under 30 was just so organized and prepared. And that's why I want him, I, I invited him to come to the show so he can get you as organized and as prepared as he is. So I attended, oh no. Uh, he invited me and I attended his program or the program called CERT, Community Emergency Response, Response Team. Team. And um, I spent two Saturdays thus far from 8 to 4, 8 to 4. And we have one more on-the-job site training coming up this Saturday. But, you know, as I drove out to Kapolei, I'm thinking, what are you all doing? Are you sitting on, you know, at home watching TV? What are you all doing? Resting? You know. I was driving out there because I was so excited that I was going to get trained and get more information from Pono and your teammates. And you know, one of the neatest things that I learned, and it's very simple, and I just want to jump the gun and just share it with everybody. The one thing that I learned that really stuck in my mind is as simple as this. Put a pair of shoes under your bed, okay? Right by your bed when you get out of your bed, because if we have a disaster, if, when you get up, you're going to be in panic mode, put on your shoes, then start walking. Okay, because just simple glass or any debris on the ground could cause pain and hurt. When that does happen to you, that means you're going to go down and you need aid. When you are an actuality, you're going to get up to render aid and help others, right? So, Pono, where do we start when you tell us to build a kit in preparedness for a hurricane? Well, since you brought up CERT, uh, are you prepared right now? If, do you have something to write with, something to write on? I'm about to give you a link. So, honolulu.gov forward slash DEM. DEM stands for the Department of Emergency Management. Uh, they're actually the program manager of the program CERT, Community Emergency Response Team. Uh, it's a 22-hour training for anybody free. Uh, doesn't matter if you have access or functional needs, whatever your age, your, your background. Uh, we'll take anybody. We'll train anybody. Uh, so go to the website. You can sign up for any course. We have them at least twice a month, either uh, the traditional course hosted by the city at, uh, in town, or you can take a community course like the one we're holding out on the leeward side right now. Uh, so the very first thing that, that we want to ask everybody to do, you know, you don't have to go out and be a volunteer. You don't have to go out and, and get all this training. Uh, but the one thing that people can do is build a kit. Mm -hmm. And that's just taking into consideration all the things you do on a daily basis and rounding up those items and putting them away and having them set aside so that should there be a disaster, you have everything ready to go all in one place. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the key things for the kit is Ziploc bags. I, I collected the big ones because in, when the hurricane hits, everything's wet. It's rain. You're running away. You're running in water. You're running in, in floods. So you've got to protect your documents. So I already have all my documents packed up in the bag. And so it's accessible right there where my kit is. So Pono, where should one leave their kit once they get it all packed up nice and neat? Well, there's multiple different types of kits, too. Uh, you also want to consider, uh, you know, do you have kids and do they go to school? What is the plan for the local school? Do you maybe want to pack a small Ziploc bag for them in their bag every day? Do you need to leave a kit at work? You know, is work far away from, from home? Uh, do you maybe need to leave a kit in your car? Uh, 
Uh, but the most important thing is for me, my, my everyday carry bag, uh, I have things, essentials that'll get me back to my car. And then whatever I have in my car will hopefully get me home to my, my bigger kit. Wow. I mean, and these guys are serious. <laughs> so um, in his car, he has everything there. They have water that it's already packed out. And by month, I think, is it monthly you change out the water or weekly? Oh, uh, that's what I try to stick to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, who does that, right? So I want you all to do that. Be prepared. You have it ready. And if it's just, I mean, not just, but if it's an accident where, like with all the shark attacks, I want to say, I, I learned how to use a tourniquet. I understand how, and I have one in my trunk now. In case somebody needs it, I can grab it and go render aid. So it doesn't have to be a natural disaster of any sort of magnitude, heights. It can just be as simple as a child falling down and they're bleeding and they need help. So we're going to, we're being prepared to take care of that. Um, another thing is fire extinguishers. You know, so yeah, I have fire extinguisher in my home, but you know what? It hadn't been used for a while. I didn't realize that you got to shake it up because the powder settles to the ground or the bottom and it's not of that much use, right? And then I have a big water hose in front of my apartment. So I call my manager. I said, hey, when was the last time that hose has it been certified? And he said, why, is something wrong? So I said, no, I just want to be prepared and I want you to be prepared because you are responsible for us. So I'm getting on top of him. So, but because of Pono and what I learned uh, at his short, short classes really fired me up to ask the right questions to the right people. So we can't say, oh, how come you never checked? So we, are, right, we already checked it because because of you, what you trained me and you know, like all the fire extinguishers, Oh, no, where should we put the fire extinguisher in our homes? So the, the turnover right now is great because the student now becomes a teacher. Uh, <laughs> one thing I would caution, though, and you've already brought it up, is when you put together your kit, uh, you want to be cautious of, I want to know how to use the things in my kit. I don't want to just put things together and, you know, come disaster when I'm under stress, this is the first time I'm going to take it out of the packaging. Uh, you want to test it out. You want to get trained. That, that's where the, the give back is. Uh, for, so specifically for fire extinguisher, uh, one place that most people will put their fire extinguishers in the kitchen. Uh, problem there is where do ho most uh, home fires occur in the kitchen. Uh, so you want to keep it uh, near doors, bedroom. Uh, the best one I like to share with people is to keep their fire extinguisher uh, next to their bed. Because a lot of times uh, home fires and, and people that perish from home fires occurs uh, during the night while they're sleeping. You can use that fire extinguisher as a defensive tool if you needed to. You can use it to create a path in the fire to, to get out. You can lose it, use it to break a window if you have to exit through a window. So it's got multiple purposes, like many of the items should in your kit. Wow. And another thing, too, I have multiple flashlights. I never had one right by my bed. I have my phone, but a flashlight would be better because it just, just handles better. And so now I have flashlights by all my, my desk, my bed. And everywhere else because instead of having it in one drawer where I normally store it and in case of uh, emergencies when I think the light's gonna go out I have it right in the centralized location so I'll now take the flashlight go to that spot turn on my light source so I have that so I won't I can assess damage within my home right and so all these little things I mean until you start practicing it it, it, it doesn't matter you got to take action to make things happen otherwise it's just a flashlight it's just a pair of shoes it's by the door for me to get from a to the door i'm going to be in trouble so these are little simple things that i learned at cert and i'm so excited that i want everybody to know about this and one tip for you and your audience maybe i didn't yes. share it in the cert class when you store batteries yes. store it in different separate containers if uh, one set of batteries leaks you don't want all your batteries in the same place and, oh. and all of those get contaminated Right. So keep your battery separated. Okay, that's another good tip. See, just keep listening to us, guys. You're going to be so like an expert, like Pono is. And so now the next thing is we've got a bag prepared. Now let's make a plan. So do you have a plan? Do you have a plan? <laughs> so, right, what happens in case of emergency? Where are you going to go? Does your family know where you're going to go? Who knows where you're going to be in that time? And that's so critical. So, Pono, can you tell, tell us about um, the best plan to have? Yeah, that's a simple uh, for, for us. Uh, most of our residents in grade school, we had the fire department come to our school and share our home evacuation plan. And we drew a picture of, you know, where's our meeting place outdoors? And do we know the appropriate phone numbers to call? But just having any kind of plan, right? If your family is separated and traditional communication go down, 
do you all have a common place that you know that that other person is going to be at that you can rally at, you can meet at? Or again, just having a safe place outside of your home should your home uh, find itself in some kind of risk. Uh, plan. One unique thing that we like to share with people is to have an out of area contact or here in Hawaii, out of state contact. Because when our communication system becomes overwhelmed with everyone and anybody trying to contact their loved ones during a disaster, uh, you'll find that you, if you can get out of state to a different network, you can maybe relay information between me, I'll call somebody in California, my mom will call that same person, and we'll let them know where we are. Uh, another thing you can do in your planning is to send text messages. Text messages use less bandwidth than traditional phone calls, and your message also gets sent in a queue. Hopefully, uh, it'll be sent later on. So when in doubt during disaster, if uh, uh, communications is inundated, send text messages. So powerful, right? He just said instead of calling, text. Text is a little bit more efficient at that time. Um, another thing, too, like he was saying, I'm going to just repeat and reiterate what he just said. Make sure you have an out-of-state friend, relative. Give them a list of where, of where are you going to go in case of disaster. Where is Wendy Lowe going to go in case something happens? So she'll know. My contact in Vegas will know. Go find your mom. She's there. Also, you supply them with a number, a list of numbers. Because if we don't have cell phone, I don't even know Pono's number right now. But it's on my phone, right? So but if we have no cell service, all of that goes obsolete, and then we're lost. So make sure you have a physical list of the numbers that you need the, to contact Im immediately, as well as give that contact person, out-of-state contact person, that list so they can also communicate with us because we may be down, but they are still up and running in another state. Hey, see, I listened, eh? You thought I was sleeping, eh? Right? So I tell you, I'm not even Paul yet, so there's so much to learn, and I want to take it again so it really just you know, sinks in and, and just be well informed in time of need. I just think this is so amazing. The phone situation, I didn't think about that, but now I have everything written down, laminated, keep one in your pack, send one to your neighbors, I mean to your out of state contact, and give it to your family members as well, because a lot of us don't know the numbers. Is that right? Right, and so on the next um, slide, well, let me see, we have a, a slide of the island, and it's broken up into divisions. Can you just share with us quickly what that what that map means? Well, before that one, so oh, so keep it sorry. simple for the community. Uh, three things that we can ask everybody to do. You don't have again. You don't have to go out and seek grand resources, but that's to build a kit is the first one. Mm -hmm. Make a plan, and the last thing is to be informed. Be informed. So get credible and reliable information from the sources. Okay. Uh, when it comes to weather, that's uh, the National Weather Service, for example, the Honolulu Forecast Office. Uh, but hnl.info, that is our city and county of Honolulu resource. A uh, number of city departments will share notifications. Uh, the police department will let you know when there's uh, traffic collisions and road closures, water water supply about water main breaks and road closures, the Department of Emergency Management about weather hazards or other you know, emergencies, and a number of other agencies in the city. So I think best place to get information, first off, is uh, hnl.info. Okay, so all the different resources, that would be one of the ones that you would recommend first That'll be the primary, yeah. Very good. That's the one I downloaded, so I'm, yeah. I'm a good student. Yeah, it's a, a mobile app, uh, yes. both Android and iPhone, uh, or you can go to the website, hnl.info, to receive push notifications, text messages, or emails. And so real quick, we're running out of time. That map, yeah. what does that mean? Uh, that map is all the communities across the island that are organizing that may be at different levels and different stages in, in organizing, but at the end of the day, uh, whether you live in town or you work in Waianae, you want to know what these people are doing, and they may be your, your first line of defense to help during a disaster uh, when that, there's that gap where responders will be overwhelmed. Well, that's why I wanted you to bring that out, because if you look where you live, and know where you got to go in case. Just be prepared, and that's what we're talking about today. So, Pono, I want to say mahalo to you for taking your time out of your busy preparedness schedule. And Thank joining you. us to get the word out to the people of Hawaii, what we need to do. Mahalo. Thank you. And I, I would ask the uh, residents of Waianae Coast to always stay Waianae ready. Yay, Waianae ready. <laughs> All right. Aloha, everyone.